Welcome to the Fashion and Color Show, where we have dynamic conversations with designers and creatives influencing fashion. This show was inspired by our book, Fashion and Color, Volume 1, that serves to preserve the history of black designers A to Z. Let's get into the show. I am here with Nigeria Ely, who is the creative director of Tear and is doing incredible, incredible things in this industry. Thank you. Welcome, Nigeria. <laughs> that was an amazing intro. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Brandis. I am here with the incredible Brandis. How you feeling? Daniels, I feel great. You feeling good? I feel good. I feel well, you, good. well, these pants, I can't <laughs> stop talking about these pants. I love these. No, yeah, one of my favorite uh, space pants that we drop. We actually so our space pants. We normally drop them in like, like this cell soft fabric or like nylon. But this was the first time we did it in leather, like two years ago. They were in a fashion show. They and are yeah, so, so dope. They are so I love dope. them though. I love these. And the crazy thing is, me and Nigeria did not plan this. <laughs> no, not kidding. Not we both have on leather pants. I'm wearing Sergio Hudson leather pants and tear sweater that's a great from that's the university great collection yes. right yes to university and um so so this was a coincidence <laughs> this was a coincidence so nigeria what's going on like what's what's happening right now in your world a lot a I lot know. a lot i don't know where to start um personally i feel like you know this is like a new year in the sense of like well every year is like a new year but in the sense of like I just hit my 30s, mm. right? Like I turned 30 earlier this year. Okay. So more so like just navigating the space, you know, everything that you wanted to do in your 20s or you wanted to accomplish or achieve in your 20s or even the lessons that you wanted to learn from your 20s that you now carry over to this new frame of life. And I think that's kind of the space that, I, that I'm in, just yeah. making things make a lot more sense, you know, right. like still moving and like viciously still taking risks but making sure like all these things also make sense to the lifestyle ultimately that i'm trying to live and uh, like achieve you know um business wise there's a lot going on um we have our special collaboration with peanuts for the franklin armstrong That's why foundation Fra franklin is our <laughs> franklin is our special guest yes today. franklin is our special guest um but yeah, so we have that partnership that's launching tomorrow. Yes. I'm excited for. Yes. Um, and outside of that, we're just working on so many other projects. One that launches next week, one that launches for the holiday season. Um, earlier this year, we had a dope partnership. And other than that, just working on the next couple of tier like events and gearing up for next year because next year is also 10 years for tier. Oh, is it 10 years? Next year is 10 years. Wow. So just gearing up for what that looks like. and I am wishing you. <laughs> let me tell you, I'm wishing you the very best for 10. I'm going to claim an amazing 10th year for you. Thank you. I would tell you, our 10th year <laughs> was my hardest year. I'm not wishing that's going <laughs> to be your case. Um, it was just a really interesting year, but I almost feel like our year 10 was like testing me because the 11th year things were happening that I couldn't have even dreamt. Right. And no, so, I definitely feel that because I'm kind of feeling that now. I'm like the push of getting to 10 and not really, not like really the push, but like, you know, there's a difference when you're younger starting a like business to when you have more skin in the game and yep. when you've really understood the in and outs of a lot of different sectors. So it's like the way you operate, create, work with people, do things, it yep. all becomes different, right? Yeah. Um, so just kind of navigating those spaces and once again, just doing things that make the most sense and not just because we like it or we, yeah. you know, think that it it is cool or, or, or like things like that, you know? You're thinking um, about it, you're running a business. <laughs> yeah, you're running a business, <laughs> right. you're running a business. And it's like, oftentimes when I think, all about it. I always think in the like mindset of okay, Tear is not like this dorm room project any like more. When we were like selling clothes out of like our dorm rooms or on campus, yep. um, like it's it's yesterday I actually tweeted it actually has grown to something so beautiful over the years, and yep. you know with that comes a lot of re responsibility, right? Yeah. Um, as well as the mindset to know how to navigate certain things in sectors. So, yeah, I guess it's those like grow those growing pains. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. 
And, and then when I said that, I was like, wait a minute. Actually, year 10 was when we got the call from Nike and LeBron to do the sneaker. So mm -hmm. I'm going to take that back. <laughs> there was a good stretch of our year 10 that was tough. But the year, our the end of our 10th year ended up being like really, great, really yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right now, that's what I'm doing. I'm just like in preparation for that and like really just... Just like taking taking more 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 time, you know, like taking time to really digest how everything flows, how yeah. things come to life, everything, you know, because it's something that I would want to last forever, and you yeah. know, it's done in a like amazing job. But if you ever want anything to continue to grow, you have to take steps back to evaluate where you are at that time. So yeah. I think that's the space that I'm in. Where like things are still going great and going good, but there's also things that can be going better or could yeah. be going better or just spaces that I know I want to enter, or spaces that I know I'm not in any like more. You yeah. Know? So, ten definitely. years is a big accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. So, so congratulations! I, like you. I hope you take the time to actually celebrate that. Yes, I'm trying. Yep. Because that's a that's not an easy feat to keep a business for ten years. It's not. It's not. <laughs> and sometimes it don't even feel like it, honestly, too. Yeah. Like, sometimes it's just like it almost feels like yesterday. What was some of the lessons you wish you had known at the start of your journey? Um, I think there's a lot of different lessons. What I will say, because I can't pinpoint one right now, I always say is I'd rather learn lessons now than later. Mm -hmm. And I always think the now is when you're meant to learn that lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times we think in the sense of, oh, I wish I knew this when I was younger. I wish I knew yep. this when I was this age or that age. But I truly believe that we learn things when we're meant to, meant to learn it. Yeah. Or even if we knew that this was a thing, because it's one thing to know something, it's another thing to uh, like apply it, Yeah. right? So you can also know things for a long while, but it, you have to courage up the strength to actually uh, like apply it. Yeah. So I think, you know, there's not much things I wish I knew when I started, but I am glad the things that I've learned along the process, it, it most of it happened to me in my 20s or entering my 30s now, um, so that when I'm, 35 or 40 or 50 yeah. or anything, you know, God willing, I'm not making these same things, right? Like yep. making these, like, I don't really like to say more like stakes or like errors because once again, like growing a business is, is, is like not a linear process, you know, like you learn things, you unlearn things, you relearn things. Um, and ultimately you have to do what works for you and what works for your team. Is there something so, you could think of now that you've learned and something that you've unlearned? Um, <clears throat> one thing that I learned is give yourself, I actually learned this from Dev. Okay. Um, Dev is. Dev, yeah, I'm gonna, let me, so Dev is, first I'll just start by saying he's an amazing person, but for those who don't know who Dev is, Dev is Tia's brand partnerships and events manager. Okay. Um, outside of that, he does a plethora of other things in the world of pro production and management and things like that. Um, but Dev is, Dev is just a great, great person. But one thing that he's 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 taught me that I've like applied over the last year is even if you have a certain amount of time, give yourself time. Hmm. Um, meaning where it's like, if somebody's offering you extra time to do something, even if you're going to finish when you finish, take the extra time right? because you never know. And I'm such a like fast paced person at like times where I just like to get things done and yep. move. And he's kind of helped me understand the power in like having extra time, having yeah. wiggle room, having yep. room for things to like sit, you know, um, and I wouldn't say I was always that that like person. I was a lot of like, let's go, let's just go, let's go. Like, yeah. I'm very much of a like, like we have to, to get things done. And I remember when I first started, you know, they say, what is it, under promise, over deliver? Yes. Yeah, so that's the so that's exactly what he says yes. all the time. He was like, listen, under promise, over deliver, because you know it's going to be great anyway. Right. But let it be great and still give yourself that time. Yeah. What's something so, you had to unlearn? Um. One thing that I had to unlearn is expectations. Mm -hmm. That's like for like lack of better like mm -hmm. terms, you know. I think in like business, I think in like any any like realm, right? Whether yeah. you're a creative in business, whether 
um, you have a nine to five, like anything. I think that expectations lead to disappointment mm -hmm. and it's cool to have your guidelines and have your expectations that's based on what the job or field is, yep. but personal expectations within business doesn't always work. Yeah. Um, and I think with that, the lesson for me more so was like, nobody grows at the pace that you grow. That's why we're all different people, right? Right. Um, and I think for me, there was a lot of things that I feel in my life that I had to learn from a young age. You know, like I had to grow up very fast. I had to be the man of a household at 18 years old, mm -hmm. you know, while going to college, while figuring out life, while just figuring out how to just navigate, right? Um, so for me, a lot of the lessons that I feel, you know, people learn later in their 20s or in their 30s, like I, you had like, to learn. like I had to learn it at a like certain age. So there was definitely always times where I was just like, why doesn't this person understand the seriousness of this? Or why doesn't this person get this? Or why don't people, you know, move as or like efficiently as me or things like that? And this is like with anybody, right? And I had to realize that my experience isn't anybody else's experience. And no matter how much you want things for the people around you, for the people you love, for just people in general, you have to let people have their journey. Okay. right because your journey is based off your experience and it would be wrong to expect somebody to move in the way that you do when they haven't experienced or seen the things that you've seen so, um so i yeah. want you to go back to and by the way to the audience we're in new york city there are all <laughs> kind of sounds around us right now helicopters <laughs> flying and all the things um go back though to your to your childhood like mm -hmm. did young nigeria like did you see for yourself like where you are now like could you see yourself being yeah. in this place uh i would i would say yes right um and i would say yes mainly because like i've known what i wanted to do my whole life wow like for as long as i could remember there's three things that i've always wanted to do and that has never changed and what are those right? three things um three things was to have my own clothing brand have my own fashion line um the other one was to have my own pro production studio in space um, because growing up I love having parties I love having you know, like events just bringing people together was fulfilling for me like I've always felt like I've been this self-motivated self-confident person and a lot of that stemmed from like home yep. uh, so my fulfillment was more so seeing other people have fun and other people and like joining them them like selves like yep. that's what made me have fun yeah um, so yeah, so having having a having a fashion brand, having a production slash event space, mm -hmm. and directing my own series. So mm -hmm. I wanted to do a, and still want to do a animated series. And I kind of cracked at it when we launched the Tear Island project. Yeah. So like all the three D characters and like the clothing things like that. So that was kind of my way of like getting in that like three D and animation world because like. I grew up and still do watch a lot of cartoons. So for me, it's like, I want to have my own cartoon series. So I have to tell you, um, the way you guys execute your launch, I have never seen a designer do what you do. Thank you. When you launch. Thank you. I mean, there was one year where there was like, what was it, like a big movie? Oh, yes. I think, right? In that was a, a big, 3D film, yeah. Yeah, there was one year where there was a big movie. There was another year where there was Tear Island. Oh, right? yes. Um, I'm trying to think, what are all the things you've done to launch? I mean, you've had so a lot. A lot. many. Every <laughs> time you launch, you do like these huge experiences. What's like one of the craziest things that you pulled off that you're like, I can't even believe that actually worked? I would say two. One was the 3D animated show that we had. Yeah. Um, we had it at a historical home in, in the like Bronx, like it used to be a mansion. Um, and this was during COVID, so you know was there was a lot of right? yeah. It was it was, yep. it was it was it was 2020. It was the first year um, that Tier made seven figures because that 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 for us, you know, it was it was it was just a time that what we had and what we were working on was in the most demand for the world, mm. which was 
sweatsuits. You know, yep. people weren't going out no more. People weren't clubbing. Yep. They were running errands. They were taking walks. Yep. Um, chilling at home, things like that. Um, traveling if they could, you know. Yep. Um, so that demand kind of catapulted us. But the year prior, which was 2019, was when we made our first like six figures, and that was when we launched the sweatsuits. Um, but I say all of that to say going into 2020, well, going going into the show that we had in 2020, because obviously we didn't know that the pandemic was going to happen. Right. Um, but we had to sort of, I like jest. And earlier that year, I had already started working on the next project and what what it would be, basically. And the show was in a was in was an outrageous amount of money <laughs> but we pulled it off and at that time the amount of money that was spent on that show it was like oh like this could have bought homes this could have bought like a storefront this could have bought so many other you can't even things think about it but then i have to remind myself where it's like it's never about that yeah where it's like if you're confident in your dreams and if you're confident that the execution would be worthwhile, do what you have to do. Yeah. Because also the money is for the brand. Yeah. The money is to propel the brand. It's not to go make your personal wildest dreams happen yet, right? Right. Like once right. it's once you're and I and I think anybody that's an entrepreneur, a business owner, you know, like you have to keep pouring into your business and keep pouring into your business until it's able to fund itself, till it's right. self running. Right. And a lot of times you don't know when that is. Yeah. Right. Um, but to stay on topic with, with that, the show in 2020, that was, that was one of the biggest things because one, we were told that it couldn't happen. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've always been a person where it's like, yeah, okay. Always. <laughs> like you tell me right. something that's not possible. I'm be like, okay, right. for you it's not, <laughs> right. but watch right. this. Um, so I had met with somebody who basically just told me what I was trying to get wasn't possible um it it kind of was discouraging but not really because it just fed like fueled me to just do more and that's when so that was actually dev's first time producing an event for tier mm. um we had like this huge 60 foot screen like cube screen um in the middle of a lawn at this historical property and we literally set chairs all around it and we made like the time frames so and like instead of having one like frame we showed the same thing throughout the whole day and made it like movie times mm. so it's like okay this person has the six o'clock slot the seven o'clock slot that. the eight o'clock slot um just to comply with once again how the world was made sure the seats was done we had like every seat had like um sanitizers masks yeah. everything on them and it it just came together so beautifully. And that was like our first huge moment for Terry that was like, wow, this is like a self-funded project that was an insane amount of money that didn't hurt us at that time. And it just turned out beautifully. And yeah. like everything that came after it, like it was just worthwhile. You yeah. know, it was just worthwhile um, because not only did it show, show us like what we're capable of on our own, but it also just showed people that have watched our journey and watched, you know, us come from making dorms in a teach uh, in the us us coming from making um, clothes at the like mall and selling clothes out of dorm rooms and things like that to this huge production, you know. Um, so that was I think like that moment will always be special for me because it really looks. Like even like watching the recap videos, it was just so perfect and yep. cinematic. And to get everybody from all boroughs to travel to the Bronx for a show, like it was just great. That's huge. And um, but I feel like people show up oh, yeah. for tear like that. And you know, there are times when I'm thinking through like a vision for HFR and I cannot get the vision out of my head. And I'm seeing the <laughs> the what this is gonna take <laughs> but like you know like i saw dougie fresh closing our show this year like i yeah. couldn't unsee it 
and he was the only person that I saw. Yeah, and that's the I think I think that's one of the biggest things also that I've learned over these years. There's gonna be a lot of things that only you see. Yeah. And even in that, no matter how much you try, there's no way you can possibly explain it to somebody how you envision it in your head. Yeah. And when you get to that intersection, you're gonna have those people who believe in you because they just know that you might think some wild stuff, but it works every time. Right. And I'm riding with you because I know this is gonna be worth it. Right. And then, you know, you have those people that's more conservative and just yeah. real like Zerve that you're like, eh, like, what about this or this? Or I don't know if it's gonna happen. I and think you, have you to need choose. both though. You do, you do. I think you need both. But I think you, you like, you also, like, it always comes down to the factor of what do you know you're capable of? Yeah. Right. And I think that's always the bigger, bigger message and like the bigger thing there that if I think this is achievable, am I willing to fail if this doesn't work? Am I willing to succeed if this does work? Right. Right. And it's like, if you're comfortable with either outcome, then it doesn't matter. Right. And I, and I think that's one of the biggest things to like executing dreams is that most times, if not all the time, you don't know if it's going to work. There's no but, guarantee. But, like, if it works, boom, yeah. you got it. And if it don't, you're just like, okay, like, I learned from this. Like, what, what like, can I do better next time? At least that's yeah. how I, like, process I, I feel There is no certainty. Yeah. When you have there's a dream none. and you decide to, like, execute on that dream, there's no... There's no guarantee. You don't get like some contract and say nah, like, this it's guaranteed that this dream is actually gonna work. Like you not don't know. But that's also life, right? Like there's no certainty or guarantees in life. So sometimes you really just have to go for it. And I think what I've admired so much in Tear and and what you've been able to do, um, is that you guys have these big, big, big dreams, and I see you actually executing on them and very few people are willing to go there because i know the risks that are involved <laughs> in pulling some of the things off yeah. <laughs> that you guys have been able um to pull off what's what's been some of one of your like biggest challenges as a designer there's a few i think one we have to look at, at it is like the world is changing the world is always changing um from the way people receive things or people can like assume things how much social media plays a factor in people's mm -hmm. daily lives um there's so many different aspects and i think the most challenging thing has one of one of one of the most challenging things is always making sure that you're meeting a deadline right like you're meeting a season mm -hmm. and if you're in the world of fashion then it's like Yes, things sell year round, but there's 100% items you know perform better in certain seasons. Right. So if you don't get it manufactured or done it at enough time, and then now you have have like product, but you have to probably wait to a whole different season yeah. or things like that. But you're still spending your money, yeah. you know, like you're still spending funds that can go towards other things. And I think, you know, anybody that's in any creative realm, but I like especially fashion, have your calendar like all the way mapped up. And and yes, like things change. Like yeah. nobody calendar from what I know ever has gone exactly the way they foreseen yeah. it. But I think the more you prep yourself for hiccups, the better you are. And I think that's what we're doing better at now and, and like just doing more of now is making sure that we're in a space to just not feel flustered or like rushed because a lot of things go wrong when you feel flustered yeah. or they go wrong when like you're like rushed and i think for us is like when it happens it's going to happen when it makes sense it makes sense yep. and we i think everybody on my team i can speak for like we love what we do yeah. right um but more so this year I've come to the realization of I love what I do, but I also love a lot of other things mm -hmm. like my family, right? Which I have to be here for. Mm -hmm. So if I'm overworking or, and not necessarily overworking, but if I'm burning myself out or if I'm 
you know, just not inside a right headspace because I have a million things going on. Like it takes away from the people that I interact with, right? Like I may not want to speak. I may not want to go out. Yeah. I may always be tired, things like that. And when you realize these things, it's like anybody that's passionate about their work loves their work. Yeah. But most people that are passionate about their work, you know, they have a hard time juggling that, that like yeah. that like work-life balance. Yeah. And it comes to a point where you have to realize that like there's other things just as just as important as your work. Yeah. Once again, like your family, like your health. Yeah. You know, and it's like these things have to be nurtured too. Yeah. So I think that's like, yeah. No, that's good. I'm sitting here now. <laughs> you, I'm like on your amen corner at this point because it takes a no, because it really takes that a takes lot, a moment to get there. It I'm, does. I'm it there, does. Right. I finally like got to the place. I'm like, Brandon, like there has to be some balance. Like you need, you need you know, more time to actually like take care of yourself. So I'm happy that yeah. you are there now. Yeah. And um, sometimes life forces you there. Cause I'm not going to yes. say that I'm here by all the way by yeah. choice. A lot of it is by realization and choice, but there's also a lot of things in your life will fall apart if you neglect them. Yeah. Right. And I've experienced that a lot this year yeah. where it's like, I see so many people, you know, they always, I loved here. Congratulations on everything and congratulations on this and oh I just seen this and I'm always excited. I'm always happy. But really do I do do you see people or actually like, you know, how's your mental? How's your health? Mm -hmm. How's your family? Like things like that. And it's like most people, especially through social media, especially through the world that we live in today, associate people with their brands and not first that this is a human being that has to go through the same real life experiences as us. Right. Right. And I think for me, it was one, re like, realizing that I value, like, family, health, everything else just as much as I value work. And my life cannot end all, be all, all about work right. every time. Right. Whereas, like, even to the times where I'm out sometimes just socializing, like, there's certain things that I don't want to talk about in this space because right. I already have to deal with it all day. Yeah. Right. Um, and I make it an effort to like be conscious of those even though even, even even those type of conver conversations. But I think realizing that once again, some of it was realization, but some of it was, okay, I'm gonna let these things like God is like, I'm gonna let these things fall apart in your life so that you see that like you have to focus on these too. Yeah. And I think as much as like success and accomplishments that I've had this year, I've had a lot of rude awakenings yeah. where things just completely fell apart. Yeah. And it was like, well, now you have to pay attention to it. Now you have to get it together because it's just gonna get worse if you don't, Yeah. right? Um, but in that, I found so much beauty also because like, for example, like this time, well, this like summer, was the most time I've spent in the summer with my younger brother mm. in like a while. Um, because I'm always out, I'm always working, I'm always getting things done. And like, he's always in school. And when I, at, at, like, at like that time, when I would come home here, be sleeping, ready for school, things like that. This year he turns 21. Wow. Well, actually in like three weeks. Okay. Yeah, three weeks. Super happy, super proud. Uh, happy to have, birthday, little to brother. Have, to have raised the eight year old to the time he's 21. So. Wow. Oh, you raised your brother. <laughs> yeah, me and my sister. So, wow. um, he turns twenty one. Just such such an amazing t like for his age and to know like the type of world that we live in these days. Super proud. Goes to work. Go to school. He goes to LIU. Okay. So, like he Legacy. just he just yeah he just he just he's just doing his thing. But I have to say where it's like we've got so much time to like we've spent so much time together this summer that's so cool to the point where like even now like every day like we don't go to sleep without having like just a bro to bro conversation yeah and just chilling and it's like that to me means more than anything that i do i love that way more than anything I'd like being able to like just be there for him and just to know that he's also going out in the world following his own path and his own journey so it's like things like that also makes you realize where it's like once again like I love my work, but I love my family, right. my health, and my other like obligations in life just as much. And right. even if I don't love other obligations in my life, they have to be done or they got to be for yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has to be, you know. So I guess more so, not finding balance, but more so 
because you no know, balance is some harmony. objective harmony sometimes. is yeah. the new word finding right? um frequency in like the things that we do like making sure everything is on the same frequency so that's yeah. so good i'm so happy that you're there because it takes us a long time to get there sometimes it does it does and it's definitely still a work in progress yeah. definitely still a work in progress for sure but you're on the journey yeah but and you're on the is. but you're on the journey i watched this movie and the end of it it was like what's more important the destination or the or the journey and it said the 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 uh, journey is the destination because mm -hmm. you're always on a journey right like no matter what age phase that right. you are in life like you're always on life's journey in general so it's like you're not gonna reach a destination obviously until you're probably not here right. and he's like more god god like willing but it's just like we 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 oftentimes try to strive for things that we have to let life play out. Mm -hmm. And I think just letting life play its course, like, cause that's the destination right there. It's like all your experiences and like compass who you are. So, so yeah. Just go on and preach now. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, thank you so much. Like, I feel like you just shared your heart with me. <laughs> thank you. Well, I, I am. And no, and I and I I I appreciate that. Like I really really do. Like there's once you've had like some hard lessons, like you want to be able to share them. No, right? exactly. And so Exactly. Um I really appreciate that. What what do you have coming up for tier that you're really excited about? I'm excited about a lot, honestly. Um This has been a very trying year. Once again, a lot of ups, a lot of downs, but I think that even with that, there's so much beauty in what we do every day. And we have a lot of just amazing projects coming up. I'm not sure what I could say, so I'm not going to say those project names. <laughs> um, but we do have one that is coming next week, at the end of next week. So I'm excited for that. Um... I'm excited for our Peanuts collaboration we dropping a, tomorrow. People, we got a Peanuts collaboration that yes. is out. And um, when this show goes live, it'll actually oh, yes. be out. So you can actually shop the collection yes. featuring Franklin, our brother here, Franklin. Uh, and it's limited edition. There's only so much quantity. so And it's going to be collectible. So you yes. want to make sure you get that. I just want to also say, like, this is the most fun I've had designing a for a project in a long time. Wow. Um, because I feel like once, like just the, just the synergy between the show to just my love for cartoons to the brand, like everything just made sense. And we all just have a love for Franklin and his character and his impact to the Peanuts universe. So the team and I, like we really had a great time, like the, the like designing these, these pieces, so. Let me tell Make you. Make sure y'all get them because it's definitely limited. That jacket, that varsity jacket. Yes. That's gonna be gone in two point two seconds. Yes. That varsity jacket is beyond dope. Yes, that is that is. And there is only so many that will ever be available. Yeah, that's one of the, that's one of my favorite pieces I designed this year. It's that so good. It's so so, so good. Oh my gosh, I feel like Please. there's so much I want to get to, but I know we're like short on time. But we were talking about these pants earlier and you were saying that Usher wore these pants. Oh yes. Um, Jason Rimbrick actually, it was 2021. Usher, I think this is when Usher was on his press run when he announced the Vegas residency yep. that we all know and love now. Yep. Um, he did um, a cover and a spread for a billboard, and Jason had hit me up like, yo, we're styling Usher. I need this, 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 and this. And at first, like, a lot of things don't hit me till I actually see it. Yep. Um, and even when I see it, like, I feel like, am I in a stimulation? Like, <laughs> is this real? Right. Um, and there's, like, a lot of moments that I have that, like, <laughs> blink twice if this is not real moment. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so he pulled these pants, he pulled the vest, and 
some time went by and I didn't forget about it, but you know what pulls like, you know, like stylists pull from a bunch of people. Oh yeah. And you they know, give lots of options. It, yeah. yeah. So it's like, it's, it's like, it's always like a needle in a haystack or right. it's like, it's one out of all these items and the fit just happened to work and it went really well and it went live and I, 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 I'll never forget the day because my whole team was inside the studio and we were just working and we seen it and we were just going crazy like we were like we started blasting Usher music oh. dancing in the studio <laughs> dancing in the studio like just like yo and it was like for Billboard it was like right. cover of Billboard then it had a video. He had it on like a different shirt from um, from from one of our projects right. to like start off the video, and like I just remember just texting Jason, just hitting Jason like, "Yo, bro, like thank you, thank you, thank you." And like I'm I I feel like Jason, like I'm always so grateful to have met him because how I even found out about Jason was through um, one of my team members at the like time and he just loved Jason as a stylist. Oh, he, Jason so they would so always dope. like, so like he would always speak about him and then, you know, it just so happened randomly, Jason hit us up one day and it was for Issa. And then that was like the first time we got our, um, we got our like first cover, right? Cause Issa was on the cover of paper. And then it was like Usher and it was just like, you know, I think he does a great job at like connecting brands to the right people, but especially when and where he can always putting black deluxe designers in the spotlight. And I respect that one, because we're both from New York City. I'm from Brooklyn, he's from Queens, even though I live in Queens now, so we both yep. rep Queens. Yep. Uh, also, I just think, you know, um, anybody that's any anybody that's in a space to do something life-changing for somebody, and they can like that's always a like great thing, you know, because it's always a each one teach one situation, and like we all are gonna be put in a place once or a million times in life where we can either take an opportunity and make it this, or we can really make it more and like packful by doing something else. Yeah. So. And and it's crazy because Jason um, will also be on the show, and. You know, I feel like when I listen to him talk, he talk about the people who open doors for him. And so that's yeah. really what it's all about. And it's it's, the, it's always industry. about. Yeah. And lately, one of my favorite things to say is like, don't pay me back, pay it forward. Yeah. Right. Because a lot of things that I do for people, I don't I don't do it for anything back. Right. Um, I do it to genuinely see people win, to genuinely see people like once again, from a child, like one of my favorite things to do was to watch other people have fun because yeah. in my head to myself, I'm already having, like I right. have a blast by myself. A lot right. of people cannot be with themselves. Like yeah. I can be with myself for a long time right. and have a blast. Right. Um, and it's sort of like me in my own world. And I don't know if that's like a Pisces thing or whatever. It's a Pisces thing. But it's like, thing. I like, I really be in my yeah. own world. So it's like, there's not a lot of like outside satisfaction that makes me like, right, right, right. you know? So for me, that's seeing other people have fun. I love it. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I think one, pay it, pay it. Don't don't pay me back, pay, pay it, it forward. forward. Because for me, that's the best thing you can do for people. If somebody is teaching you game or somebody is putting you in a position to win or to become more into the more and like to the you you want to be, it's up to you to continue that cycle. I love right? that. Right, because that's the only way that we get better. That's the only way that we learn industries. That's the only way that we navigate these like spaces, you know, and make them our own or build our own, you know? Uh, Cause I'm definitely a bigger fan of like creating my own space than joining joining a space. Like I, um, I've, I've always had that mindset where it's like, eh, I just want my own. <laughs> I, I absolutely feel you. And I love that as a quote that we can all live by, right? Don't pay me back pay it forward. Yeah, definitely. Nigeria, thank you so much for being here. No problem. So, so <laughs> much. Where can people find you? Um, can find me on LinkedIn. Find me on LinkedIn, not Instagram or Twitter. Find you on LinkedIn. <laughs> Nigeria where, Ailey, because I'm going to be on LinkedIn more. And but, where can they shop the brand? Um, you can shop tier at shoptier.nyc.
So shop, S-H-O-P, tier, T-I-E-R, dot N-Y-C. Instagram for me is Nidespade, so N-I-D-E-S-S-P-A-D-E. -E. Thank you so yes. much. And by the way, Nigeria is also, tier is featured in the fashion and color book. There you go. You and your brothers. <laughs> so first you got to sign this for me. Um, for the, just sign on that side so that I can have it. That's going to be my special book. Earlier, um, I had another designer sign this for me, so I appreciate it. And um, I'm so happy that you guys agreed to be in the book. So here is yes. here is their page here. What, what page are we on? That's page... What's your 52. 52. See, I know it's 57. 52. <laughs> page yeah, 52. you had it. Page 52. Page Thank 52. you so much, Nigeria.